Hello and welcome to the finals for 4 PL Cup number 19 and we have ourselves a best out of 3 between Natural 9 and Ice Climbers. This is game number 1 and hopefully for our sake we're gonna see 3 games but it might be only 2 depending of course how these two teams are gonna be dealing with this game. It's uh, 4 PL so it's winner takes it all 400 euros. And they both want it very bad. We are playing on a US East, if I believe correctly. So I will be checking the pinks. Because, of course, we've got an Australian team taking on a European team, Russian team. And as you can see, we just do two pink tests straight in a row so that you see like the differences. So we have around 300 ping for three at least, uh, three members of Natural 9 at least. There's two Swedish members on there as well. So. Uh, they don't have that much issues with it, but the rest of Ice Climbers, they're around 200. So we are having a bit of a pink difference here, but let's just focus ourselves on the game at hand. And we know that Natural 9 is used to playing with delays. Well, Ice Climbers might not be, so that might be a difference here that could be in favor of Natural 9. But we'll find out soon enough, as we have got Nyx and Batrider being banned out by Natural 9. No real surprise. And a Keeper of Light and a Wisp being banned out by Ice Climbers. I mean, it's it's all the same every time again, or about the same ish, I should say. Uh, we've got the Darks here for the first pickup for Ice Climbers once again. At least they had him in the previous game as well. Of course, the one that actually was giving away first blood against a solo Weaver. Uh, but um, let's see if we're going to see uh, Lowly playing Five the same seconds. hero and doing a better job this time. Uh, we're going to see a Rubik and a Queen of Pain picked up by Natural Knight, so they already got themselves a solo mid and potentially a support for themselves as well as Phantom Lancer and the Shrag got picked up by Ice Climbers. Now Phantom Lancer is a great carry. I mean, we've seen him do... Well... We've, we've seen him being annoying. Let's just put it that way. He's he's okayish on the lane, but you won't see him that much in the game until he's fat. Ten seconds remaining. And when when he's fat, he is very fat. Five seconds. So Natural remaining. Nine, they know what kind of game they're looking to be uh, to be facing if they don't have a solid strat against it. So they uh, you either have two options: you go for a for for your own late game. That's better than your opponent once with anti mage. That might actually be an option, or you go for a mid game. A mid game to just so dominating mid game that that phantom lancer is not going to be of any issue whatsoever. Uh, now Nitro Nine, they like to have a jungle hero, so f for that purpose, that's already, or at least for if if they indeed do that, that's already a bit of extra mid game slash early game that they would have against ice climbers who don't normally have that. Uh, though Ice Climbers did their homework, they banned out the chance, so that's not going to be happening this game. We still, of course, have the Nature's Prophet in there. Uh, some uh, a hero that Godot, of course, loves to play. So we'll see if that's uh, going to be a hero that Natural Nine uh, chooses for themselves. Uh, for now, I mean, I like I like the Shrek, and I, it's okay. Phantom Lancer, I'm not going to say I like him Ten because the prince. I, I like him as a hero, but the principle about a game that he's in, like the game that it can turn into, is not that enjoyable. But on the lane, Le Shrek and Phantom Lancer, I mean, they're okay. You've got, of course, uh, the Le Shrek stun to follow up on the slow from the Phantom Lancer, but it's not really solid. So I'm kind of curious how they're going to be working that angle. Of course, in theory, Le Shrek could also be going to the mid lane, but we're not expecting that because we haven't seen that in ages. And well, it could be a surprise factor from Ice Climbers, but who knows. Uh, by the way, we, of course, seen Natural Knight also in uh, Star Ladder um, qualifications earlier. Like, so it was actually last week. And they had Harakun play the anti-mage every single, or at least two out of the three games that we saw of them, I believe. At least a lot of games. And he was able to dominate with that. And every time again, they had a Rubik anti-mage dual lane. Ten so we are going to probably see that and then the Queen of Pain mid. And then still with Nature's Five Prophet if they can get him. Remaining. Enigma is another jungle hero that Ice Climbers decided not to want to face. We have a Tinker ban out from Natural 9. I mean, if they want to go for some sort of push, even without the anti-mage, they don't want to be having that March of the Machines. And then Magnus is the last banner from Ice Climbers. They don't want to be dealing with that one. As of course Natural Nine, they still need an off lane. But we have so many options left for that one with the Beastmaster and the Windrunner. Everything is still there. Um, so they don't really have to worry about that one that much. But let's see what Natural Nine wants to ban out here. I mean 
there's still mid laner probably needed for ice climbers and considering i mean queen of pain is going to be mid so queen of pain is a hero that is basically able to stand her own versus every every mid lane hero she's just a very solid mid laner so it's not needed to ban something specific out against her but looks like they are gonna be banning out a hero that is of course the, the well it is brewmaster and um I mean, Brewmaster is it's, it's not really the hero that you're damn, damn banning out. Well, it is, obviously. But you ban out a hero that at level 6 has got that ultimate, so you can't push in against him. You basically cannot push in against a Brewmaster that has his ultimate up. And that's service. the reason why we see him being banned out. We have a Windrunner picked up, so that's going to be the uh, or the long lane solo for Natural Knight. And we, I think we're still going to see either an Enchantress or, or a, uh, a Nature's Prophet coming off for them but we'll see what they're actually going to be doing we have of course got the shadow demon picked up by ice climber so that makes a lot more sense because um wow shadow demon together with the shrek is of course a great combination shadow demon together with the pugna also a great combination and you know why because you can have a disruption the pugna blast will be able to go after that and you, ha you will have the soul catcher up on that and pugna blast is already so damn painful to begin with especially if you have a decrepify up on there as well so it's it's going to be tricky to uh, to have that up against natural nine and pugna is considered to be the one of the best pushing Ten seconds remaining or no let's not, not put it that way pugna is considered is, ha is, is the hero that has the most spammable pushing ability there. that sounds a lot more neutral doesn't it uh with of course the blast uh having a very short cooldown and if you try to push it against him I mean, it's gonna be okay if you do that for a tier 1 and tier 2, but as, as soon as you try to push up the base against the Pugna, it will be very tough to do that because those blasts are gonna be very, very painful. But let's see, Nitro 9 actually taking quite a long time. Um, of course, uh, well, I was expecting them to go for a jungle hero, to go for a Nature's Prophet or for an Enchantress, and, and either they're debating which one of the two they should have, or maybe they're thinking about going for a tri lane still. I mean, we're gonna have a Pugna mid up against the Queen of Pain, most likely. We're gonna have Phantom Lands of a Shrek, Shadow Demon on the tri lane, safe tri lane if I, um, safe like tri lane, I think. Should be okay. And Darcy here on the off lane. I mean, that's it for Ice Climbers. Natural 9, they just have Venomancer. to decide, but... And it's a Venomancer. Ooh. I like it. Well, one, because I like Venomancer, but two, I haven't... And two, I haven't seen him in ages, but look at... I mean, we have a Venomancer. It's it's nice against the Phantom Lancer also, because his poison just ticks a bit harder, of course, on those illusions. So you might be able to see earlier which one is a real one and which one isn't. But it's, and it's going to be very painful on the lane. If it's going to be a tri lane with that, and there's going to be an aggressive tri lane maybe for uh, for ice climbers, then that's going to be uh, tough to take. But I don't think there's going to be an aggressive tri lane actually. But we'll find out. We'll Prepare find out. Let's see who is playing what. We'll jump ourselves over to ice climbers first. We see Solo playing the Lashrac. Everybody's going to the bottom lane so far, so we'll see how that goes we're gonna have Sharfik playing the pugna it will be nexus on the phantom lancer lolik will be playing the dark seer and dread will be playing the shadow demon this game and they're gonna try to see if they can find someone in the jungle but you know we can see the minimap we know that everybody of natural nine is on the top lane uh, where we see Risk playing the Windrunner, it will be Shatan on the Queen of Pain. Timmy will be playing the Venomancer. We have Harakun on his Anti-Mage and Goldot will be playing the Rubik this game. So it looks to be indeed a Trilin coming off from that Troll 9 safe Trilin though. But we'll find out for sure soon because everybody is now roaming around to a different lane. Uh, and to me, just going to check if there's going to be a rune here, see if he can get lucky with that one. Windrunner, of course, going towards the bottom lane. Now, Windrunner is going to... If, if she's going to be up against a uh, against a tri lane from, from Ice Climbers, it's not going to be that easy for her. I mean, the Lance has a very long range. If there's a disruption, there will be a stun to follow up. There's nothing that Windrunner can really do against the it. She can't begins. normally get away in time because, I mean, even with a Windrunner, it's just, it's just not fast enough. It's that simple. So she has to be very careful because it can go go south very early on. But we'll see how she's going to be able to deal with that one. 
as we have already got a smoke up we have a gale and a telekinesis at the ready and they're gonna go towards the middle lane they want to try to farm this pugna because that's the thing about a pugna he's not picked up that he's that often because he is a fairly squishy hero he's not that fast <clears throat> well, he's actually pretty decent for us. Gale, though, he still hits Telekinesis as well. There goes to a blast. Can they get the first blood? Should be able to. One more hit needed. Bam! You're dead. Timmy picks it up. First blood goes to him, and that should be the start of many more kills to come. Telekinesis to start that off, and that's also the Windrunner coming in, by the way. The harassment from Solo there, but that's the first blood. Not missed, I mean. But, um, yeah. Solid kill. That's what you can do against Pugman. Doesn't have escape mechanisms. Doesn't have anything. To, uh, to deal with that one until he's a bit more uh, more tanky for now though he's gonna try to push this slightly see if he can get a two minute rune maybe might be the thing that he's gonna be forcing Queen of Pain not to be able to go for because of not course he'll be busy around. with farming the creeps under his tower well, let's see if Sharf is gonna get that lucky maybe he's gonna force Solo to go into the bottom lane to do it there of course for Windrunner what I was gonna say is it is not easy for her to be up against a Shadow Shaman oh I already said that actually uh, up against a Phantom Hunter that is but what is a thing that Winterner can do? He can farm Ancients, and that is... Wait a second. Nah, it's fine. And that is something that you can't do with every offlaner, but considering Winterner's long, long range, you don't really have to wait until you're higher level to really do this. You can just continue to rest. It is not as fast as farming on the bottom lane and getting the experience there, but, you know, you can't really do that anyway because you'll die. So a pretty decent uh, decent way to still get something done here. Though of course it's a pretty obvious thing to do also. So we might be seeing someone from Ice Climbers to actually go there and try to do something. As we already see Shatan being harassed here. And he is now out of regen. pop forced to pop his salve. And Sharfik doesn't have his bottle just yet. It's going to be really sad about that one. Poor you're still standing... Uh, They changed his name. Apparently, that warrior's name is Dread. Okay, but yeah, we have um, we have got a, a, a tough lane for the Queen of Pain actually by the looks of it. Well, after that first blood, of course, she is going to be in favor, but she's not going to be having a a very much easier time than um, and then the other uh, than than Pugna. I mean, even with that kill, and it looks like Pugna is going to get some help as well. We've got, of course, the disruption followed up by Split Earth. And uh, they want to try to do the same thing. They want to try to catch up the Queen of Pain, but she already scouts him out. There's the disruption should be coming soon, otherwise Shatan will be able to get away the Decrepify there, but it's slightly too slow. And uh, it was already Dread that decided to back off before the Decrepify hit, so they're not going to be able to do something with that gank. As, by the way, in the meantime, Lolik, as expected, also not able to stand against that top lane, will be farming in the jungle, which is something that he can do a lot faster than his Windrunner can. Windrunner, who's now going to for the last golem, level 2 for now, but, you know, slowly but steadily. That's all you basically can hope for. Too bad. In the meantime, the mid lane is gonna be... I mean, I'm sipping in the mid lane, most, because this is the lane where there should be action, because the rest of the lanes don't have anything to deal with any other hero that's on their lane, because Windrunner is farming Ancients, and Dark Seer's in the jungle, and so the rest of the sports are just PvEing basically. They're just gonna go pull. Even though it looks like these are gonna actually try to push something. Nah. The lane will be pushed out though. That might actually be something that uh, Risk is waiting for. Risk really wants to have that farm. And that's gonna be them. You know, they notice that there's. Um, yeah. That there is Ancients being taken down. They now also saw Radiant's that one. So Solo is just gonna stand here. Has of course got a sentry ward, could try to block something if he wants to, risk already uh, being very safe. They of course have that ward there, so they saw them coming in, meaning he can farm safe as uh, Pugna has picked up an invisibility rune. In the meantime, the top lane is gonna... Was that intentional or not? That's the question. Doesn't look like it, was it? Nope. I don't think that was intentional. Oh, he still dies though. Die in shell. Funny. Top but yeah, um, oh wait a second, winter in trouble. Nah, we'll but yeah, push comes in on the top lane from Natural Nine. Wants to go for the tier two, tier one rather. As um, Lolik is already on the top lane, back to see if he can get some of this experience. In the meantime, Winter still went down to that combination. 
as the dark shadow demon still goes down to the tower. So this was still the combination that I talked about. Disruption there, Split Earth there to follow up on, and the lands, of course, also. I mean, Windrunner's Windrunner is not going to do anything then anymore. And they will be able to push down this tower. They, have, of course, also have got two levels of Edict. And I like that we saw Solo cancelling his animation uh, for the Edict. Uh, but the fortification still went through, so they will be able to use the full edict duration in a moment on that bottom tier 1 tower. As we have an invisibility rune activated on Sharfik, and he's looking for an opening, but his invis rune is going to run out soon. And he notices that he can't do anything anyway, so he'll just leave. In the meantime, we'll be Shadow Demon that's also on the top lane, seeing if he can help out with something. But also backing off, knowing that he couldn't do anything anymore. As we have got Queen of Pain in the meantime, getting some free farm on this middle lane. She's 36, 32 for 6. Wow, Sonic Wave. Can he get him though? He can actually, maybe. He still has three bottle charges, but here comes Dread. And that is gonna be enough uh, of a reason for Queen of Pain to get himself out of there. Sonic Wave being used for that. Central were being placed up on there as well. They want to go for this. Disruption. Soulcatcher goes up on the Venomancer though. There goes to a blast. Gale goes through and that is gonna be Sharfik with a double damage rune. Did not get hit by that and will be able to pick up Shatan with the double damage rune as Venomancer still picks him up. Now it's support versus support but the Soulcatcher is already on there and it looks like Dread is gonna be winning this battle. And Venomancer boards might be able to pick him up actually. Hello Koda. That's gonna be him um taking away the gold, but that's still gonna be two for two trade. So even for both sides, picking up the mid laner and picking up the support. But I guess um I guess the advantage goes to uh goes to Natural Knight because they picked up the last zero. Not exactly sure how that works, but it's two for two. He gets the gold. He gets the solo experience. In the meantime, Windrunner, look at that harassment with those lances. That's so difficult to take. And she is level 3 right now, up against a level 7 Phantom Lancer. So she's getting lances thrown at her that are actually level 4. And, I mean, that's just that's just off the take. In the meantime, tower still not going down, though. Tier 1 tower top, also not yet going down, but that's a bit closer to going down as it gets pushed again. Even though uh, we do have Lolik TPing again towards the top lane, trying to take it, trying to... Maybe do something, maybe trying to deny it. No, can't do that one, can't do anything. Anti Mage Harakun picks up the gold, has got his hand of Midas. And we have got Pugna taking a lot of damage in the mid lane. That was a uh, well, Queen of Pain, maybe in some trouble. Blast won't be hitting anybody though, and he will be getting away with uh, enough life to survive because of course, li life soul that one. As we have Edict again on the tier 1 tower bottom, with now also Venom and Savoirs trying to stop the push, but that's not going to be any, any help. Solo picking up the kill for that one, for the tower. More gold for him in the meantime, this middle lane. I mean, yeah, Sharfik gave away first blood, so in theory he should be in favor of natural line. But we see that it's just very even still. As we do have uh, Sharfik uh, picking up a regen rune and now Shetan, trouble for him. Gonna land a shadow strike and a scream and be forced to back out, but here comes the rest of Ice Climbers. Can they actually go in on this? I don't think they can. It is nighttime though, I don't think she saw them, but it's a bit too risky. Too many people missing from the map. Bottle empty. It's not something that you really want to go into. And uh, in the meantime, we see Venomancer. <laughs> oh, that Wall of Wards is all that stands between him and the level 8 Venom Phantom Lancer. Four heroes in the mid lane in the meantime for Ice Climbers. They're really making this uh, 4.1 strat going, working for them. As the soul catcher comes here, Blink Away is faster than the Shrek Split Earth and uh, Shetan will be able to get himself out. But Godot, I don't think he's gonna be as lucky, but the Telekinesis is still there, might be able to get away. Got two stacks, one stack of Shadow Poison, there's a Life Seal and that's gonna be Phantom Lancer still picking up the kill. As here comes Queen of Pain, has got herself a shot in the grave as well, if she can get enough harassment up on, Sh on Sharfik, it doesn't even need it, just blinks in for a scream, but was that actually worth it? No, it wasn't! Because Dread picks up the kill the moment she blinked in and she couldn't get herself out of that one anymore and this will be a tier 1 tower going down in favor of Ice Climbers as we have the gold graph still around even. Because of course the towers were traded, one tier 1 tower for each team. Now though with Ice Climbers picking up an extra tier 1 tower, there might be a difference going in favor of Ice Climbers. The kill score is 5 to 6 so very even on that accord as well as the experience graph because of that even kill score. It's um, very even. What else to say about that? Nothing really to be fair. It's uh it's pretty standard as we do have Darkseer going for a pipe by the looks of it. 
Continues to uh, continues to defend the top lane for now. Now next is just go back to farming on the bottom lane. Goes for the fusel blade, bit of a standard item for him in Windrunner. Probably gonna go for a four staff when she gets the gold. Even though this, I mean, this Windrunner is not really that farmed, so she's she's a bit far behind. Hey, one hero that we haven't really looked at that much, even though you know he has been free farming and got the tower gold as well, is the anti mage. And with that Hannah Midas, he is able to. Um, to farm a lot faster than the Phantomizer, because Phantomizer doesn't have a hand of Midas. And of course, Anti Mage, regardless, is a hero that farms a lot faster than a, than a Phantom Lance, or at least when he gets his Battle Fury, if he's indeed going for that, which I think he is. But, um. But yeah, Anti Mage definitely pulling ahead in the net worth, as we do have Shadow Demon picking off the Queen of Pain. Shatan overextending quite far. Picked up with a Shrek. Still, though, like, died for a kill on the support of Shrek. Not really worth it. So we have on the top lane Blast going through her. Kun finally getting a bit contested for his farm. As we now see that the Phantom Lancer is getting slightly uh, slightly even. Also just had something brought to him. Of course, the things that were in his career is the Fusion Blade being ready. Looks like they want to go for this. There's going to also be a Shrek from the bottom, though. Gale goes through, goes on the puck, and I just right clicks going through, the Crepify also on there, and he has to get away, Lashrax are not hitting anymore! And it is a natural knight that is trying to get himself out of there, Telekinese is still there, but Godot will take a dive! Harakun still not comfortable blinking away, wants to only blink when it's absolutely necessary, as Venomancer is gonna be finding himself to get a bit solo, Venomancer Nova going through as anti -Mage goes down on the side. And the Nova won't kill Lashrax, but that, that dot from the Poison Sting will, definitely. So Venomancer kills the Shrek, the Shrek kills the Venomancer, and it was Lolik that picks up the kill on Harakun. That was actually the first time he died. The Shrek still died, of course, to the Venomancer, but I mean, Anti Mage died before then and didn't even get an assist, didn't get anything from that kill. So that's quite uh, quite painful, and they, they will lose their last tier 1 tower as well. Metro 9 starting to lose some ground here on, uh, on gold as well as on experience, of course, with those kills going away of. Ice Climbers, as in the meantime, Phantom Lancer, he is a, um, a happy bunny, he's farming on the top lane now also, the, with this Diffusal Blade ready, and will be able to, uh, to stand against that anti-mage sooner or later. We have seen fights uh, between, uh, or between teams with Phantom Lancer on one team and anti-mage on the other team before though, and I mean, I've, we've seen both results, and I do believe that Natural 9 has seen both results as well. Even, uh, they, I think they were the ones victorious versus uh, a Phantom Lancer with their anti mage but we'll, we'll see if they can pull that off again. As, um, well, so far, net worth is still, is still ahead, but... I mean, control. The control is just starting to lag slightly. Oh, hello. Uh, Venomancer, I think, I think that they're a bit out the round and outnumbered. Three versus one is in the meantime, the Shrek is also outnumbered with the uh, Shatan taking a lot of damage from that, from that eating still. Actually used the Sonic Wave for that kill. With Windrunner being present for that, that's really important because she needs that experience. She's now level 7 and if we look at the level differences, we definitely see that. Natural 9, I mean we knew that we're, they were slightly behind, but Windrunner is one of the bigger reasons that uh, they are behind. Because, I mean, if you took a, take a look at the two offlaners that they have, that we have, of course, one on each team, uh, we've got the Darkseer being on level 9 and Windrunner being on level 7. That's a big difference. And then also the supports that are lower on Natural 9 than they are on Ice Climbers. It's, um, it adds up, it adds up definitely, as we have got Nexus being dusted up. They might try to get him, they might be able to get him as well. There's no blink for another second there, Nexus trying to get himself out. I don't think he'll be able to do it though, and that is indeed the kill going to Shatan. Important kill indeed, as Pugna still picks up a Windrunner, but that is a trade that you should make every single day that you can make it, because that is a worthy trade indeed. Even though giving up a tier 1 tower for that might not be that worthy, but let's see if they can do something with that. They do have the Rubik coming in from the side, but the Edict is just too strong. And Solo picks up the tower gold for that one, and the rest just gets themselves out. I mean, they used a lot of resources for that Phantom Lancer, and even then... Even then it might still be worth it, because they used... Every single hero to push down that tower. There were four heroes around there. They picked up the most important carry that the opponent team has. And in the meantime, this guy is happily free farming. And I do think that's indeed worth it. He gets a lance in the face, but will be able to back himself out. Slightly overextending, or at least I know that's gonna say overextending actually. So just slightly 
ballsy on the wrong side of the river, so to speak, as we have got the dust up, smoke up rather, up on uh, Ice Climbers, at least on two of the supports. And they're gonna, of course, try to go for uh, for a kill, even though, I mean, you know, you know the combination that can, can come out from this one, and you know that in theory the uh, opponent team should not have time to uh, to blink themselves away, but I'm not really sure if this is gonna be working out. Maybe it's my mouse doing. Maybe it's maybe they're gonna be able to do this, but there's also a ruby close by and Harakun. Oh, and there's oh, actually Sharfik coming in from the side. They find Godot. The crap finally Antimage decide to go for Godot instead. Can they get it though? No, they cannot. Harakun already blinking away and Godot still on the run. Telekinesis is there. And that's gonna be a Venomancer uh, being uh, lanced up, but they can't get anything now unless Unless natural line is overextending, but that's not gonna be the case. Nope, that's a wasted smoke. And again. Wasted time. And and wasted time is more important in this game than in, in a, not a game without a Phantom Lancer slash anti mage, because time is what you need to get your carry big enough. So the team that is giving away more time to their opponent's carry, which is in this case is Ice Ice Climbers giving time to Natural Nine's anti mage. That is not good for them. Because again, the anti mage was just farming again, or at least blinked away and continued farming elsewhere. And yeah, they might give a tower for that, and Phantom Lancer might be able to pick up the tower gold. But as soon as an anti mage is big enough, I mean, gold is, is static, basically, apart from the knives, of course. You can try the deny. Um, nice! Nice! So far for the static gold, that was a deny from the Venomance Awards. Nice one. Uh, but at some point, if if the game is delayed long enough, your opponents will be able to get your towers as well. So, it's it's not that big of a deal to give a tower away sometimes if you can get, then get extra farm upon your carry, so in this case the anti-mage. Because this is working out great for them, he's st still looking to go for Battle Fury though, which is... 16 minutes in, 16 minutes in, might be might be possible. I mean, if you look at Ice Climbers gameplay right now, they, they show their purpose, you know, there's like, okay, you know what, we don't want to be facing an anti -mage very late game, so we're gonna push now, and we're gonna hope to be able to do that as well on the tier 3 towers. So you, you either stop your anti -mage from farming and come face us and fight us, or we're gonna take your towers. Well, they now took down all the tier, um, the tier 2s. And they're gonna go for the tier 3, so there's no fortification anymore. And they might actually be able to do this. Natural line, they're not ready to fight yet. And that time that they were giving the anti mage, I mean, they're just making sure that it doesn't matter as if the game is over in 10 minutes. That extra time that you gave him doesn't matter a single bit. Five minutes even. That's already a tier 3 tower gone. Power shot's still doing quite a bit, but the. Oh, wait a second, hello Harakun, Sonic Wave picks up two, it's Sharfik that goes down together with Lowing, now Harakun has to blink himself away from Nexus, in the meantime Solo in a lot of trouble, still has an Edukin Nova on it, kills off the Venomancer, but that doesn't matter, cause there is an ultra kill for Shatan as he picks up the Lashrak, he picks up Dread, and the only one surviving is this guy right here. And I say surviving, but this might actually not be a good thing. Sick. Oh, Shatan! He dies! Nexus picking up the kill. Unstoppable streak ended, and Nexus continuing to farm. At the same time, of course, Harakun did not die in that fight. He was able to uh, to blink himself out of there in time. The barracks are still standing as well. But that mana void was pretty damn nice because that gave the opportunity for Shatan to pick up those kills. Without that mana void, that Sonic Wave would not have killed those two heroes for sure. So I do like it. He just steps away from farming for a second. Doesn't take the kills himself. I mean, that would of course be better, but still make sure that his team is gonna, getting out ahead on the team fight. And then just continues farming straight away. In the meantime, it looks like we're gonna have Risk in a lot of trouble. Tries to rinse run himself out of this one, and looks like he's gonna be successful. He's, by the way, going for a mechanism. So, not going for a four staff yet. I uh, say so yet. Yeah. Mechanism is decent as well, and it's pretty nice. I mean, Venomancer's not gonna be getting enough gold to get it. Uh, neither does the Rubik. Rubik is actually the one that's also buying all the dust and the, the wards and stuff. Well, Venomancer's just been dying quite a, quite a few times. He's actually died four times. So out of the 13 kills that Ice Climbers has, that's four times his kill. His death, rather. Oh, Aracoon Trouble blinks himself into safety. TP's out, should be able to do that, and... There were again four heroes deployed to try and take him down. On the bright side is still also Nexus here who's uh, able to pick up the farm. 
Uh, but they're they're just gonna go five Mendota again. Have the mechanism up on the Pugna. BKB being built on the Shrak. We've got the pipe of completed on the Dark Seer. And um, well, the rest is a bit supporting four stuff being built on Dread, but that's not really a surprise there at all. As uh, we do have more push coming in, it's risk as well as Godot trying to push them in the mid lane. Seeing if they can take a tower. I mean, like I said, this is static gold. This is the kind of gold that supports normally thrive of because they kind of need that gold. They won't get gold from farm because your carries are supposed to be having that. They won't get gold from kills because your carries are supposed to be having that. You won't get gold, gold from anything else apart from towers, or at least that's the theory. Uh, so having that tower gold is pretty big in the meantime Angel Mage pushed down to tier 2 as well Nice Shackle again and a Sonic Wave over 2 and that's already Sharpie going down Can they do more? Solo in trouble as well Disruption there to save his life as Darkseer tries to get himself out as well Power Shot doesn't do that much Solo will still take a dive so it's a double kill again for Shatan and again they fight them off Now there is one big issue with this kind of strategy that Ice Climbers are now adopting if you do this too often, it means that you have five heroes in the same lane while Harakun is still farming elsewhere. You now picked up, uh, oh, there was a PKB on the Queen of Pain, by the way, but he picked up his Battle Fury. And he's going for Roshan. But if you do that uh, too much, you are feeding your opponent team because, and they have more time to farm because you are sharing experience and gold on one lane with all five of your heroes while your opponent team at least have two lanes. Two. If you can't push in successfully, you're giving them kills, even though it's just two kills and just two support-ish heroes. Of course, Sharpie died as well, but I mean, that's that's big. And the longer that goes on, the better that is for Natural 9, and at, it might actually uh, be costing Ice Climbers the game at some point. And Sickle, that picks up the uh, the Aegis. Harakun not really thinking he'd need it, because he's not going to be in fights just yet, and he has got, of course, I mean, yeah, Chetan has been a bit more in the, in the, in the fights and a bit more of a risk of dying. And the th theory might be able to buy it back, but uh, but yeah, ages up on the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain was, of course, I mean, Shetan has been doing an amazing job. He's got ten kills. He's been in twelve out of the sixteen kills so far, and has just been overall playing a very solid game. Mm, mine is a bit in the mid mid game, but um, he managed to get on top of that one. After that, or at least, and I'm not saying that he, no, he didn't do bad at all in the mid, mid game, as in in the mid lane, but he didn't win a versus a puck now, which is, well, after that first blood, he kind of stooped back to being even again rather than being ahead. That's the one, that's the point I wanted to make. So Shetan, Shetan has been doing, of course, an amazing job. Regardless. Let's go to this pushing mid. This is quite dangerous to be here for support Rubik, but, um,. He real I mean they have a ward here, so he realizes that most are on the top lane and if he can get a land of fate bolt or something, like now, he might actually be able to force them back to their base. And at some point that's of course gonna be very important and they're they're just gonna try again. Harakun is around here as well. This time he's not farming just yet. In the meantime, Phantom Lancer is split pushing with his illusions on the bottom lane, with the real Phantom Lancer actually teleporting back towards the mid lane. He still has his uh, the same items as we saw before. He has got a level two defusal blade goal for Yasha. We'll be able able to have it soon, as uh, this time it's actually in their favor that they pretended to be pushing on the top lane because they made sure that Natural Nine was stuck inside their base for a while, while um, they are clearing out the dire jungle. It's very simple. Meet them mid lane. This is the real nexus. Hunting. Let's see if we can hunt something successfully. They do, of course, have that ward up on the high ground, so they see everything around here. They know what they're up against, they know who they're up against, and they know also know that Harakun is not around there to fight. Harakun, who is now going to be having 3200 gold, probably be going for a Manta style or something like that. And uh, we'll see, um, if, or maybe even a BKB, depending on how comfortable he feels being up against the Phantom Lancer later on in the game. Let's see if this push is going to be a bit more successful. Sharfik putting himself on the line of uh, danger, but the rest of his team is already backing off. So we do again have uh, Shatan on the middle lane. We, I mean, this is this is what you would expect. I mean, there's no opportunity anymore for uh, for Ice Climbers to do the same thing as they did before. Of course, I mean, they 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 failed twice in trying to push five on five, so they're not going to be trying to do that again. 
until I know that they're absolutely certain that they're ahead, which is the only way that you can do that is to pick someone off and make sure you're fighting four on five. And of course, I don't want to be fighting up against that ages up on Shaitan either. So they're just waiting and, uh, and forcing, trying to force stuff out, trying to force movement out from natural nine so that disrupts their farming. And maybe after that six mi those six minutes uh, are over, that the ages is there, they will be trying to go on again. But but it's it's expected that they are indeed being uh, being passive, if you were. They're being uh, fairly passive. I mean, they're trying to bait out mistakes from Natural 9. But Natural 9 is not going to let themselves get baited. I mean, all the time that they're getting is time that's welcome, because that's time that their Antimate is getting farmed. And as long as Antimate is getting farmed, they're happy. Everybody's happy. Harkun is happy. Harkun is going to be finding Sharfi, because actually not going to go for that. <clears throat> He's got 5k gold, still hasn't gotten anything, and oh, what are you doing here? Ah, okay. Solid. <clears throat> so, it is... Welcome. Yeah, it is that game. Welcome to um, Anti-Mage vs. Phantom Lancer game. Yay! Hear my enthusiasm! I'm gonna drink some water while we see Risk uh, tempting Faith here up against the Phantom Lancer. If he gets a lance on his head, he might actually be dead, but it looks like Nexus is or the real Nexus is already backing out. I like that he tried to uh, to hold up the creep wave for as long as this was needed for Harakun to jump in there without the tower taking that much last hits. And he did pick up a mount style straight off the bat. In the meantime, it's a Nexus that is also going to go uh, for that man style. Hasn't complete, by the way, if he wants to pick up, can pick up the recipe. Solo is also still farming for that BKB, so he can actually stand around and uh, running around with his, with his Nova on, with his Edict on. He has been trying to do that, but he actually kind of dies, so that's not really ideal. But um, who knows? With that um, BKB, he might be able to do just that. Because the man style indeed is complete upon uh, Nexus. We'll be able to split push a bit better with that. And of course, the longer that these kind of games go on, I mean, yes, it's still carry versus carry, but the more important those supports also get to be. So, Lishrak and going for BKB, pretty big indeed. Uh, Windrunner Shackles are going to be more and more needed, uh, even though I have to say, the Shackles have been pretty solid for the times that the pushing came on the top lane. With two men Shackles, almost every time. We're gonna, gonna of course have the Venomancers, Nova needed, but Nova is still level 1, and that is kinda, kinda painful. He needs, he needs to have that higher for sure, if he wants to be able to, uh, to have a bit of an impact on the game. Especially if this Phantom Lancer is gonna get a heart at some point. I mean, yeah, the Nova is okay-ish to see which one is the real one, but if it's just level 1 Nova upon a Phantom Lancer that has a heart, that's not gonna work. In the meantime, Harakun still pushing on the bottom lane, has got a double damage wound on top of that as well. And might actually be popping his illusions just to continue pushing. I mean, that's something that an anti-mage can do just as well as a Phantom Lancer, even though Phantom Lancer can do it a bit better, personally, personal opinion, is a split pushing. Just make sure that their opponents are constantly- oh. Almost got hit by the Terra Poison. Gonna happen. The meantime, a push again came on the top lane, but they weren't able to force a TP out of the anti mage. He has got, of course, a TP scroll. It's something that he needs because, you know, you never know when you're actually gonna go for this. Oh, Sharfik finds himself a. Um yeah, finds himself an anti mage. And if you decrepify yourself, I mean, it's great, right? Because normally you pick up a ghost scepter because that's where you can stand up against an anti mage because, you know, he can't hit you. That's all fine and all that, but. You are going to be um, submitting yourself to uh, extra magical damage and mana void. Painful with the Decrepify on and he just experienced that first hand and then Blink Dagger now up on the Rubik. I like it. More initiation. Better yet, if there is again a push on the top lane, wait a second, Harakun wants to go for this or doesn't he? 3700 gold up on the Antimates. They want to try to force out that Aegis but the Aegis is already gone. So they can't do that solo. Got to be finding still Shatan. One more hit needed, and he indeed goes down. Queen of Pain killing spree once again. In the meantime, top lane, bottom lane is the real Nexus. He's gonna be up against an anti mage soon because he wants to defend his base. Uh, but look at that. That is painful. Fortification goes out. Here also comes the Queen of Pain. Has he got, of course, a Solid Wave if he wants to, but he's forced to blink away as well. Nexus, the real one, still sitting around here. Now only backs off. 
But the tier 3 tower is still taking quite a bit of damage from that one. And that's just a small hint of the potential that you have with the split pushing Phantom Lancer. And that's why I said that, I mean, Phantom Lancer is still going to be the one that can split push a lot better than the anti-mage. Uh, but that was the real one, Harakun, and now he just has blink on cooldown. Sonic Wave going through, they realize who the real one is. Do they have dust or something along the likes? Yes, they do. Something, there he goes. The gem of Truesight will do the job. I was gonna say, I don't see a ward, so it has to be a gem. Nice kill, good kill, and that is something that they might try to uh, capitalize on if they can do it. They have only one minute. There is uh, no, uh, there is buyback. There is buyback. They have to try to force out that buyback. See if they can do that. They are pushing on the top lane, they're pushing on the bottom lane, but on the top lane is gonna be two smoked up heroes ready to do something. Haste run up on there and they're gonna be sandwiched. Two from the front, two from the back, and two in the middle with only one now locked out of position. It will be risk that will be taking a fall, vacuum back in, but it was Rubik that was able to blink himself out, but this is the real trouble right here. Bottom lane, Harakun and Shatan going for solo. There's still no buyback. Solo already going down. Mana Void doing a lot of damage. Damage and Sharfrick as well, Mac mechanism not helping out anymore. There's no mana style because no mana for that one. Blast still goes through, still no buyback. 11 seconds until the Phantom Lancer is back and they decide to just uh, head off in the in the horizon already as Roshan will be up again in a half a minute's time. Let's see if they can, yeah, they should be able to take it again. The Phantom Lancer might be there to try and dispute that though. I mean, he, he should be able to do that still. I mean, you just saw it on the bottom lane. He was able to just stand there, hitting the anti mage, hitting on Shatan also. Just not giving anything about it. I'm saying it very polite. I was gonna say something else, but then I realized I shouldn't say that. But he can do that. But apparently, he's not aware of the timer, or they decide to give it away because Roshan will be taken down by Natural Mine. No questions asked. No. Me no uh, words up or either for ice climbers. And uh, it's just, uh, or at least not at the Roshan pit. Now they realize it, but now it's too late. And that's the Aegis on the floor. Hello, Aegis on the floor. Hello, Aegis on the floor. They still realize that. Well, that bait didn't work out, but it's again Shatan that picks it up. Has has got a sheep stick now also with that. And that's something that they need. As soon as they find the right Phantom Lancer, he's gonna be sheeped. He's not gonna be able to do stuff. I mean, I mean, it's one thing to be able to take on a Phantom Lancer just, you know, on a man fight. It's another to actually be able to survive against him and all his illusions. So, you kind of need to sheep him just so he can't hit you. I mean, it's it sounds simpler. It's, it sounds stupid. But another carry, you might be able to survive when he's just hitting you, but not with Phantom Lancer because he'll create more of himself and you don't want him to do that. So, sheeping him, solid option as Darkseer's Illusion is trying to push, pull the lane back as uh, Harakun picks up the butterfly. Level 22 up on him right now as we do have the levels being highly in his favor because there is a Phantom Lancer, which is level 18. Uh, but here it is again. The Nexus pushing a bottom. Harakun pushing top in the meantime. Let's see if he can jump into this. He's not by himself. It's also going to be Shatan here. Three defending on the bottom lane, two lane. In theory, they should be able to do it, but it's uh, it's difficult, of course, to go into uh, your opponent's tier 2 tower, knowing that everybody can TP in your face straight away. So you, you kind of have to be careful there. Unfortunately for us, for us because, you know, we kind of want kills and action and stuff. Or at least I do. Now we're still very much in favor of the anti -mage. We haven't checked the gold graph in a while because, I mean, it feels even, it looks even. 3k gold difference is really nothing. And this was the point where, um, where Ice Climbers, of course, had all those towers. But, um, but Natural 9 didn't, so then they took the towers back. Kills over back and forth and, um, I mean, 3k gold. It's, it's, it's nothing. But one thing that we have to say, that 3k gold is only anti -mage. And then some. And that is that is big. That's the time that was given to uh, to him by Ice Climbers, by their split push. At the same time, experience graph is very much in favor of Natural Line because, I mean, the earlier kills were taken by Ice Climbers, the later kills were mostly taken by Natural Nines. Yes, there have been some exchanges, but mostly by Natural Nine. And it's very simple. It's later kills, I mean, more experience. There we have it. 
more experience going the way of natural nine, but that doesn't matter. I mean, yes, levels are nice, but the thing that matters right now, next to the farm of the main carries, because it does matter. But the thing is, this game will be decided probably only the moment that one team makes a mistake, and the other team is able to profit from it. Uh, greatly, like uh, picking up a uh, Phantom Lancer, as we saw earlier happening already. If the lanes are, are totally in your favor, and you pick up one of your opponent's teammates, especially if you pick up their carry, you should be able to take it if there's no buyback. But it's 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 small decisions, like blinking in blindly, not knowing who you're going to be blinking into. It might be something that Harakun should be worrying about. I mean, what is um, Pugna? Pugna has actually got an agonim, so life steal going the way of him. We have four staffs all over the place. They kind of need a sheepstick for themselves, though, even though they... Well, I'm saying sheepstick. Yeah, they need a sheepstick, just so that he can't blink out. I mean, they don't need to stop him from attacking because it doesn't really matter. Nexus won't die from it, but he might be trying to blink out if there is a man fight there. And uh, we have, of course, got Phantom Lancer building towards a heart. No real surprise there, as we have 4k gold upon this anti-mage, and it looks like, with that Aegis that they have, they might want to try to force out something. Even though they don't have a Venomancer with them, Venomancer is farming someone on the top lane. Venomancer is going to go for BKB as well, I mean, he wants to also stand there and, and at least be able to survive after getting his, uh... Oh, wait a second. There goes Shatanic. Oh, trouble for him. One second until he can blink again. Vacuum is still in, but the blink is still there. But that is just... Oh, Shatan, another one. And he goes down. That's age is gone. Why, why run back? They should be able to blink away straight away. BKB on actually he gets uh, ready for a Sonic Wave. Decided not to do it though. It's there's a disruption. Also, Harakun blinking in, blinking out. They can't get anything. Lance is hit back and forth as its telekinesis goes upon a fake one, but just jumping, jumping towards the lower ground to make sure that he can't attack Christ. anymore. And this was actually a slight overextension from Natural 9. They shouldn't have gone in there. And oh, Godot is gonna pay for that one by the looks of it. Yep, yeah, there he goes. And now Harakun can still blink himself away. He should be able to do that. We'll need to do that. Like I said, just one of these mistakes might be a bit more costly than you would initially uh, anticipate for. Just having one person at the wrong place at the wrong time. As you have anti is going for a Skull Basher. And now a side of Vice also up on the Dark Seer. Because they need that. They need that control. As said buyback from the Rubik and that's probably all they wanted at least to buy back and they back off again they can't stay here because next they might be the ones to make a mistake to overextend they've been here before at the base of the uh, natural nine that is and died at the base of natural nine as well so they don't want to be having that one as uh hey didn't he have a anti-mage outfit before Oh, wait, that was in the previous game, wasn't it? Wow! My brain works odd. There we go. I really thought he had that outfit. He only died once, by the way. Quite impressive to see. As it's, of course, Shatan that's highest up on that list of kill deaths and assists. But having only died once as an anti mage, pretty damn sweet. Been in six kills uh, compared to uh, Phantom Lancer being in seven kills. Phantom Lancer who has his heart complete and they're gonna go for the top lane. I mean if Phantom Lancer has a um, a bundle of illusions and sends them all towards the barracks they might be able to do something there. There's no fortification. Power Shuttle will try to uh, slow down the wave but look at those illusions. Exclamation mark come out. Harakun is gonna be there as well. Fateful is going through. Gales, Telekinesis, they need to stop this because otherwise I mean slowly but steadily this barracks will drop. Look at that. And with each wave in theory, he should be able to do that, and then slowly but steadily those barracks will drop, but for now he's gonna be backing off. As Harakun also not able to farm anymore, or at least he was called back by his team to be there for an engagement that did not happen, and that's something that costs him time, and time is money, and money is items. That's the one. Yeah, we do of course have the ages gone. We have 2,500 gold already up on the Queen of Pain again. And this game has now gone on for 38, th sorry, 39 minutes. It feels like it's longer, if you, uh, not uh, not for the state of time of the game, but for, um, for if you look at the heroes, what the heroes actually have. But that's because there's not been that many kills, so the heroes haven't lost that much gold. And, you know, that's why everybody's uh, seemingly close to done with these items. 
Oh, close. I say close. Yeah, maybe close. Apart from the supports. <laughs> well, Veteran's a level 12 still. Cutie pie. Yeah, Blink Digger up on the Rubik. I mean, it's all very nice and all that. BKB up on solo. Shadow Demon having that four staff, but we will make a difference later on. It all depends on that anti mage. And they smoke up. Let's see if they can find something. Roshan is gonna be uh, up again in two minutes. So if they win this fight, maybe they can get a maybe they can get an anti mage. But anti mage blinks himself away, up and away. Even a blind blink. I mean, he didn't even know that their opponent was there. It's just you know, or maybe he did. But the ancients uh, left alone. Shadow even picks up a blink dagger as well. Some more mobility for him. And all of a sudden, five heroes on this bottom lane, ready to force down a tier 3 tower that's already below half HP to begin with, so very damn nice. Shadow Demon gonna make some more illusions of Nexus, and that's of course, I mean, Shadow Demon is considered one of the counters, or not counters, one of the heroes that you can do something against the Phantom Lancer with. But they're on the same team, so making illusions a Phantom Lancer normally works against the Phantom Lancer, but if you're on the same team, you actually get more illusions, and those illusions make illusions. So that's pretty impressive pushing power that you have that. I know, pretty impressive pushing power. I said it. And you don't even have to put yourself at risk for it. And you don't give the opponents any gold for it. They do have a push in coming from the t on tier top 2 top and the tier 2 attack. middle. So they will be backing off for that one. And more importantly, they will be backing off for Roshan soon, most likely. Shatan might be in some trouble here. They're gonna come in. They are smoked up. They are ready for this. They want to start off with the disruption. Is that blink there already there? Yes, it is. So one blink forward, but the blink forward goes on from uh, Shatan first. Shatan has no idea that they are coming for him. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Blink. Disruption. Soul catcher. What's there? More. Sicko. No blink away because he's got turned into a piglet and that's a gem of truth hat on the floor. And that is the sheep sick demonstrated by the darks here and the vibe back comes instantly. Long live the queen. And Roshan of course. I go in the way of natural nine again because that excursion actually Regeneration. cost them quite a bit of time. You know about time. I'm not gonna say that again. Abyssal Blade up on uh, Panhara Kun right now, so we'll be able to do something against the Phantom Lancer if he realizes which one is the real one. Pretty neat. Needed to know, I and mean, they actually find the real one. They turn him into a piglet, but now he splits already. Vacuum back in there. It's gonna be Shatan that gets out. Antimate in the meantime, clearings out on the side. Picks up a triple kill with a mana void. Goes on Nexus right now. Abyssal Blade still there, but he g doesn't find the right one. Does find out. Find the Dark Seer, gets an ultra kill, gem back on the floor for natural 9. But it is, uh, or at least should be, unless Illusion has destroyed it. No, it is Venomancer's inventory right now. But that is the only one survivor, the only sole survivor for Ice Slimers. And that is just how fast it can go. I mean, yes, they might have had a chance to kill a Nexus, perhaps. Uh, it was, of course, the part of the fight where I was fi focusing on. They had pretty good control of him. But with Harakun just focusing down on those supports, they didn't stand a chance. And the Mana Void. Probably hit another Crepify target, to be fair. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, triple kill for that one. Gets an ultra kill and pushes onward. They do still have the Aegis with that as well. Turn the Darks here into a Piglet, and he is dead for the second time in a row, and no buyback anymore for him because he just bought back already. Fortification goes on. They will get their own tier 3 tower with this. Might even try to go for the barracks with the Mount style still, style still there for the Antimates. Escape mechanism still there. Lashraxton stolen by Godot. Of course, one thing to remember is Split Earth is more powerful in the hands of a Rubik than it is in the hands of a Lashrax, and they pick up one set of barracks, and they're, they're gonna roam around to go for the second rax if they can get it, but here comes Nexus, Lashraxton and Lance, but they blink themselves away. Disruption catches out the soul anti-mage, but anti-mage is gonna be just fine. He turns around, goes for soul, or it's Venomance so that picks up the last hit. Heracoon blinks out from that life drain from Sharfik. And that's gonna be Sharfik backing off again because he got hurt by uh, the illusions from the anti as Venomancer goes down. Still to the Phantom Lancer on the side. As this, this is a back and forth. Nice shackle, the Crepify there as well, and the scream, and that's a kill. Monster kill, Mana Void goes up. Nexus will be able to get himself out, but that's uh, 
Well, it's gonna be just fine. That's of course it was the uh, gem of truth that was on the Venomancer, so he did not get the chance to get that one done anymore. As Antimage just clears out that ward and blinks himself out, goes for the tier threes, just wants to go for the towers, just wants to go for solid game advantage, aka creeps that are bigger than your opponent's creeps. Vacuum inside Dark Sea Wolf, got some nice illusions uh, there, and that's Chatan. Trouble, not a blink there. There's a gem, goes down. Anti Mage, did he pick it up? No, Windrunner didn't pick it up either. That is Chatan indeed going down. 6,800 gold up on the Anti Mage, and he doesn't have boots to travel or anything. But uh, luckily, there's a Venomancer there, just defending their barracks. And Hurricane just gonna continue farming. They did not get these barracks, by the way, which is quite painful for uh, Natural Nine. They spent a lot of time trying to get for that, but they did get a lot of kills out of that, and they did get ahead. We do see the gold graph dropping very, uh, well, plummeting rather, towards in favor of Natural Nine, with experience graph not as convincing because there were kills back and forth, but still in favor of Natural Nine for sure. Well, let's see if they can uh, get something down here on this bottom lane. There's no tier 3 towers here anymore, so they might be able to do something with everybody alive. Four Ice Climbers and the, anti or the Queen of Pain actually still dead. With no chance of buying back, because she her buyback is still cool. And she of course bought back before the Roshan kill, after dying on that uh, top lane there. But let's see if they can do without her. The real Nexus is there as well, they find him. That's gonna be Invisible Blade still not being used. He gets turned into a pig and Harakun goes down! He needs to buy back, buys back! In the meantime, solo PKB on Edicton picks up Godot, who buys back as well. Nexus is gonna be on the run, will be able to jump himself out of that place as Shadow Demon disrupts an anti mage who tries to go on more targets, gets himself a kill on the pocket, gets himself a kill on the Dirks here with Nexus still going down as well. But he bought back, and there goes the Shadow Demon triple kill, going away of the anti mage. And the only one staying alive through that one was actually. The little Shrek. On the side of uh, Ice Climbers, of course. In the meantime, Bear is still staying alive. Pretty de pretty nice for Natural 9. It's uh, a fight that they started out, of course, on uneven ground without that uh, Queen of Pain. Now, it didn't come cheap because they did have to buy back two of their heroes. One, of course, being the Anti Mage, which is. I mean, yeah, he has the gold, that's all fine and stuff, but if he buys back. Means he doesn't have a buyback anymore. I know it's obvious, but it's it's kind of important. The only upside that he has is that he knows that Phantom Lancer also bought back. And also lost a lot of gold. He is actually a lot poorer than the Anti Mage is. And if you look at net, net worth, I mean, there's no no secret that Anti Mage is ahead on net worth. Just that Anti Mage can be only three. Phantom Lancer can be zillions. They're gonna go for the mid lane, which is quite surprising since they already have mid lane, but they might try to push in mid lane and then go for the bottom lane racks, or rather go for the last tier 2 tower that's still standing. Taking out the inches on the way. Illusion rune there as well. If you look at the map, there's no wards up for either team. Of course, there's been gems on either side, basically the same gem that's been passed back and forth the entire time, which is now still in the hands of Shaitan, or again in the hands of Shaitan, I should say. <coughs> And they, uh, but they back off, not going for a tier 2. Smoke up actually for Ice Climbers. Let's see if they can do something with that. But the butterfly completed up on the Phantom Lancer. He went all in. No buyback. No nothing. And they're gonna try to find them. It's always funny when you see this uh, this movement around. I mean, as an, as an observer or, or, you know, spectator or caster or whichever. You see, we see the minimap. They don't. So it's kind of funny if you see them just roaming, looking for them, and you know, they're on top of their game, they're super focused, because the moment they see something, they try to go in on it, but, you know, they, we know that they won't find anything, Radiance because everybody's already gone. But it's quite interesting to see that, I mean, it's, it's quite a high level of focus that you need to have as a player, I mean, we can just sit back here and relax, right? But that level of focus has to be continuously on because one small mistake in this stage of the game costs you the entire game. Now, a small comfort, it is best out of three, so... If you lose a game, you still have the chance to uh, to get inside. Uh, or, uh, well, you, you're gonna be inside game number two, but you can get a win on game number two and then force out a game number three. So it's not entirely lost if you lose this game. But um, I believe I, it was a long time ago that I um, that I heard uh, Sinrin say uh, during a cast that he did. Um, it is 
I mean, if you, if you lose a game in in twenty minutes, you know you get like pushed very hard or something like some kind of strat. That's I mean, that's not that's not fun. But if you lose a game, it's it's not the end of the world also. also. But if you lose a game in uh, fifty minutes or longer, or you know we are almost fifty minutes or just late game, then it's a lot worse. Not only because of course <laughs> the amount of time you spend in it, but because you know that you in theory could have won this game. Because you held on long enough, and, and this is the time when it's... I mean, he said it obviously in a different way, and I can never explain it the way that he would have... We would have... He did it, but... This is the time when it's so much more about... Captaining, and decision-making, and, and all those small... Small mistakes that you can make with positioning, etc. I mean... Basically, everything that they were gonna be... If if they die, if this team dies, if Natural Nine just um, loses a fight, then you know that I, they had multiple options. They either shouldn't have gone into fight. You know that's this is decision that they made to to actually fight that. I hope I get my point across. It sounds a bit blurry now that I think about how I said it, but I hope you understand it because I mean that's that's just um, yeah. I don't know. I mean I. I Personally, I'm not the most fan, the biggest fan of having, um, you know, one and a half hour long farm fest, etc. To get see which carry is gonna be biggest, but it is. This is the ultimate fight to to see how these teams are using their team compositions, how they're using their combinations, and what kind of mistakes they they find in their opponent's team movement. Barracks gonna be fortified as a Shetan already being harassed back by the illusions. Harakun comes in. 3600 gold, they forced them back again. More, more shadow, more phantom lancers. Something that anti mage can, uh, can deal with. And this is a standoff. Standoff for set of barracks. Now, one thing that um, ice climbers can't really have is standoffs because if you're out of your base too long and you have got one uh, lane being uh, pushed out completely, uh, then you will be losing your tier four towers if you're away from your base too long. So, so they either need to go soon or risk losing their losing one or two of their tier fours. More disruptions on illusions. Because more illusions is fun. And I mean, at, at Natural Nine, they probably know there's a oh man fight. Nice shackle, and this is the real one. They realize it's now also BKB up on the Venomans. A Dark Seer Wall doing a lot there. Harakun gonna take a fall, and there is a buyback for him still. As we do also have Godot getting picked up by the Shrek. Now shackle, it is the Dark Seer that goes down. The Shrek will die. Gem of True Side on the floor. Four heroes dead on the side of IC Cup. What am I saying? That's not good. Four heroes down on the side of Ice Climbers. It's also icy. You know, it happens. And that's a boost to travel, righty? And that is Harakun pushing out mid that he knows that he's only up against a Phantom Lancer and he is the one that can take that. There is a buyback up on the puck now though. He can't take it. Wow, did I really say Icy Cup? I did. Bad. Bad. And there's a buyback on the puck now and he's just gonna go for the barracks. Let's see how far he can get. Before he gets for a side of the Shrek, also buying back. There is a decrepit fight. It is a Shatan that comes in. Shatan drops super fast. Here comes Antimage, but he is now realizing he might be in slightly over his head. Mechanism helps keep Sharfrik alive, and now Harakun, he cannot die. He must not die. He bought back. He cannot buy back once more, and this might actually be the decision that might have cost them the game because right now. There is only uh, there's only three semi supports and or a semi carry maybe in the way of a, of a wind runner that can deal with that. Queen of Pain was still able to buy back, but this is trouble. No anti mage for 80 seconds longer. And then you see like th these little kind of decisions, the, the decision to push while Nexus is down. It's it could have cost them the game. It looks like Nexus is not gonna go for it though. Ice Climbers is gonna be um, taking the mid road. I mean, that's the only lane that they don't have the tier three tower yet. Might as well try to pick it up, right? 
Let's see if they get it. And of course, it is the lane where um, where their opponent has Mega Creep, so they can have a standoff for as long as they want without having the risk of losing tier 4 towers. Unless the lane is getting pushed out on the bottom lane, and Antimage is actually gonna be well, TPing there with his boots of travel and gonna be pushed down the barracks while they're having a standoff here. That's a scenario that could happen. Pipe is up though, they're gonna go for this. There is no fortification. Tier 3 tower already going down. There's really nothing that Natural Line can do to stop this one. Shackle on Illusions and Sharfik, it will be barracks that go down. In the meantime, Timmy trying to do what he can to make sure the creeps die, but then again, it's just a Venomancer. When they roam around, they're gonna go for this, uh, this set of barracks. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, Queen of Pain goes up, jumps himself up. There's no backdoor protection because the creeps are in the base. Let's see if we can get this done. There's also a TP coming back here, though. Shadow Demon will be able to come here. In the meantime, the setup rack still went down. Antimage is back alive, with now Boots of Travel also up on the Queen of Pain into the mid lane. But they won't be able to find anybody anymore. Nex is able to get himself out of there, just like Solo is running away from his uh, faith, faith that he might die. Maybe. And Harakun gonna be, uh, gonna be trying to find double Illusions. Down. Gets a double damage turn so instead. Which is fine, also. Oh, solo. Pops the BKB, TP's out. Should be able to do that, but that's still barracks standing, and that is two sets of racks now down on the set of Natural 9. And now the rolls are turned, the tables are turned, rather. It is gonna be... It is gonna be two sets of racks down for Natural 9, so that means that they can't really lose, leave their base. And more importantly, I mean, what I just said for Ice Climbers, they could push down mid. And, you know, not be forced back to their base because they still have the barracks on the other two lanes and, you know, there's no lane pushing in with Mega Creeps. But, if Natural Lane go push on one of the bases, or one of the lanes, then they will still have one left there. Oh, go dot! Oh, go dot! You're already dead! Shackle doesn't latch! Windrunner trying to get himself out of this place! That life drain is just terrible! Venomancer BK beat up! Nova goes through, but the pipe is up, and that is Timmy gonna go down. Letch is a gale, but doesn't matter anymore. The rest on their way out. Rubik the only one left dead because it's Timmy that bought back. But can they defend? This is the question. Windrunner is at least still dead. Lashrak's on hitting, and the life drain just too much, and they're just gonna continue on with pushing. They can. And the bottom lane is not pushed out enough for Antimage or Queen of Pain to TP there to try and push down Rax or force them back. They can't do that. If they leave their base now, it's over regardless. There's no tier 3 tower saving their lives either. And it is Shatan that gets turned into a piglet. Is he alive again before he dies? He is. It's Sonic Wave not hitting because there is a ward of the Pugna doing the works. It is Harakun that picks up the anti-mage. Sort of picks up the Darkseer. Two gems of true sides on the floor because they can. The Shrek denies them though. In the meantime, it is Barracks that are going to be the game for Ice Climbers. They want to get a Sonic Wave. Hits on a lot of illusions but nothing else. Nexus himself going to go for Barracks. He doesn't care about that. Sharfix still goes down but Mega Creeps now. For Ice Climbers, and this game looks to be over, but Mega Creeps, it has been done before, and now with 100 seconds gone for Phantom Lancer, with no buyback, this might be the all in push that Natural 9 needs. They still have everybody alive, they could do this. Phantom Lancer actually still buys back, maybe they cannot do this, but there is an Abyssal Blade, there is a Sheep again. We'll see, they're going for it, all in, all in, there is push coming on to the top lane, but they don't care, they want to get this game, and they want to get this game right now, they don't want to be one game behind in game number two. Let's see if they can do it. Maybe, maybe they can, and I just, oh, maybe they can, hello Divine Reaper. Anti-Mage decides, you know what, it's all or nothing, it will be Venomancer that's gonna try to defend the, the base, but the, the Defiant Rapier should be doing it. Blink in, there's the Abyssal, that's one down, three to go, two down, four to go, because buybacks. It is a uh, Mana Drain, doesn't matter, Nexus is gonna be next. Harakun, this is trouble, but he gets him still! He gets him still, triple kill for Harakun, disruption there, creating illusions, and Anti-Mage actually goes on, Rapier on the floor! Sharfik can't pick it up, he wants to, doesn't want it though, wants to go for kills, triple kill for the Pugna, can he get another one? It is Chaton that's on the way out! And there's a Rapier on the floor, but nobody cares! Aye! And no buybacks! Only on the Queen of Pain, there's a buyback, Queen of Pain is alive though. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Can they defend this? Do they care about a rapier? They just want to leave it there for the Phantom Lancer to pick it up. Dyer's ancient is under attack. But that is tier 4 tower already going down and there's Mega Creeps hurting. 
Venomans are a lot. Venomans are level 19. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. And that is, um, I think it's game. I think it's game. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. It, sh it should be game. It was, I, it looked for a second there, it looked so hopeful. Sharfik, Trouble, Sonic Wave. BKB not saving with Queen of Pain's life now by his back, but it's the barracks that are gonna be going down first. GG gets cold, and it will be Ice Climbers that will be one game ahead. One game ahead in the next game for this best out of three for the 4PL finals for 4PL Cup number 19. Winner takes it all, 400 euros. And I have to say, this game was pretty damn nice. And I'm uh, hoping for another nice game. Maybe not with a Phantom Lancer versus Anti Mage, but. I wouldn't complain that much if it was the same. But let's jump ourselves into game number two. Stay tuned for hopefully another one of these uh, epic games. Maybe one game in favor of Natural 9. So we have a game number three. Perhaps. We'll see. Game number two for the 4PL Cup Finals for number 19. Gonna come up right now. Stick around. 